Let's go. Okay, so uh, this looks pretty similar to everything that we've been doing, yet it's a lot harder. Okay. Okay. Why? Why is it harder? Well, uh, see, you try to factor the denominator, and as, as soon as you try to factor, you know it's impossible. You have to find two numbers that multiply to 5 and add to negative 4. Can you find such a thing? Yeah. It doesn't factor. That's the problem. Now, what do we do when you can't factor? Well, then you do the next best thing, which is completing the square. Let's try to complete the square. Uh, you say x squared minus 4x plus 5. Put something in the square, right? So what, what, what do we put? X minus two. minus two. Where does this negative two come from? Okay. It's a half of negative four. And then you ask, negative two squared plus what gives you five, right? Negative two squared is four. Four plus what gives you five? One. One. Okay. So that's what we get. And therefore, we can integrate uh, this one as. Oh. All right, it's space You get the psi when you see this. Okay. And then the next best thing you can do is you just set u as x minus 2. Okay. And therefore, well, let's see. If u is x minus 2, then x is u plus 2. And then du is? The derivative of x minus 2, which is? 1. 1 dx. OK, that means, first of all, you see an x. x is replaced by u plus 2. x minus 2 is u, so you get u squared plus 1 in the denominator. And this one says dx is the same as du, so I can replace this by du. And then uh, I should multiply this out so that you get integral of 3u. And then 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. And you get u squared plus 1 du. OK, how do you integrate this? Does anyone know? How do you integrate this one? Oh, you share the love. Yeah, yeah, wow, okay. I didn't expect anyone to answer that. Share, yeah. share the love. In other words, you, you split it to two fractions. One is like 3u, u squared plus 1, plus 8 over u squared plus 1 du. And then, uh, how do you do this one? If you differentiate the denominator, you get? No. Oh, wait, no. If you differentiate the denominator, you get 2u. 2u. But this is 3u, so what do we do? We put 3 over 2 integral of 2u over u squared plus 1. Right? When you multiply this, 2 and 2 will cancel, and you get exactly the same thing as that one. Plus, you can factor the 8 out, and then you get, I want to switch these two around because that's the usual form. What's the antiderivative of this second part? Uh, no, it's not. What's the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx? Negative 1. No. Oh, uh, arc. You've seen, yeah, arc, arc? 10. 10, arc 10. Yes, arc 10 of x plus c. So that's, that's what you're going to get. So you get 3 over 2. This one is f prime over f times this ln of the denominator plus 8 times arc tangent of u plus c. And by the way, u squared plus 1 is always positive, so you don't need an absolute value. You just put this. So what does that have to do with the partial fraction? Don't you plug back in, though? Oh, oh uh, so the question is, what does this have anything to do with the partial fractions? It doesn't have anything to do with partial fractions. <laughs> 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 That's right. This is not a partial fraction question. Uh, however, uh, this, let me tell you what this suggests. Uh, 
So the, the first observation that we get from this solution is that if you can't factor the denominator, don't do partial fractions just to complete the square. But then that immediately poses the following question. What if you have a cubic polynomial and you can't factor it? What do you do? Is there a completing the square for cubic factors? Cubic polynomials? No, there is no such a thing. Cubic is not, not a square of anything. Uh, but, however, there was this uh, ma famous mathematician named Gauss, and for his uh, dissertation for PhD, uh, he proved that if you have a real coefficient polynomial, you can always break it down to factors of quadratic and linear. So if you have any cubic, you can always write it as a quadratic times a linear. So that means we only have to worry about the case when you can't factor when it's a quadratic. And for quadratic cases, this is how we handle it. So here, here's our overall stra strategy. So strategy is suppose you have something like some, something in top, and you have, say, x minus 2 cubed, x plus 5. And then let's say you have like x squared plus 6x plus 13. Uh, let's put a square here. Okay. And, and this quadratic you can't factor. If you try to factor, you can't factor. Okay. In that case, what do we do? Well, here's how we do it. Uh, first, this cube would mean that you need a over x minus 2, b over x minus 2 squared, plus c over x minus 2 cubed. Okay, and we're up to 3, so we stop there. And then we move on to the next one. What do we write? d over x plus 5. And now is the next part. You have this x squared plus 6x plus 13. But if you, I, sorry, I raised it, but in, in this, you, you in this question that we just erased, we had uh, something x plus something, right? So you could have something x plus something and still be able to integrate, okay? And actually, you need this to be able to express anything that has denominator that, that looks like this. Why you need x? Huh? Why did you write e x? This is the first order, right? Do you know what the order is? Or, or degree, degree one polynomial, right? Because the denominator is a second degree polynomial, you want to put a first degree polynomial on the top. Yes? That means, you know, we saw that we could have done AX plus B, I mean AU. No, no, no. We, our, our question was posed as 3X plus 2 over X squared minus 4X plus 5. So. Uh, this was our question that I just erased, and you can see that something x plus another number. Yeah. Something x plus another number. So we could have done that to, one. No, no, no. To solve this, oh. you need to apply the technique that I showed you. Okay? Yeah. But we know that as long as we can manage to express like this, we can, we can do it. Okay? And then uh, I haven't shown you how to do this other one, but this can also be done. If you, see, because this is squared, so you better have a squared here. But then if you have that, uh, you, you still, it, it's still a quadratic thing, so you have to put gx plus h. Okay? And this can, again, be uh, integrated uh, by completing the square first, changing, a, changing the variable again. But then you have to do another change of variable, which requires a, a trig matrix substitution. Okay? So that's a very challenging one, but it's, it's doable. Okay? So that will be our general strategy of partial fraction expansion. Where should we do this?